Within the boundaries of human existence, and as far back as the memories of the most ancient Earthlings will stretch, catastrophic space phenomena in the form of plasmic energy discharges occurring in the skies of our planet were documented by the inhabitants of the Earth taking shelter from the phenomena in the most remote locations imaginable. Sometimes these plasmic events were a thing of beauty, as David Talbot of the Thunderbolts Project points out, and sometimes they cause scenes of unimaginable terror. In the form of petroglyphs, the prehistoric inhabitants of this planet carved their documentation of the plasma events, which is now being deciphered, and it shows undoubtedly that the ancient civilization witnessed something that was so outrageous that they sought to document it for all time. Their message has reached us through the ages, and thanks to years of painstaking research by Anthony Peratt, it now appears to overwhelmingly show a worldwide documentation of petroglyph patterns that were actually happening in space and visible here on Earth. Not only that, it also rained down onto our planet, affecting life drastically forcing people to take shelter in caves, the only natural shelter capable of withstanding the onslaught happening outside. Now, what if we were to tell you that the petroglyphs and documentation seen around the world of the so-called squatter man has been recreated in laboratory conditions? What if we were to tell you that these ancient petroglyphs match up to plasma discharges recreated in a lab with astounding accuracy? Known in the lab as Zenith Pinch, Z Pinch, and this was also seen in deep prehistory in the sky of our planet for around a thousand years. An intense inflow of plasma creating an immense aurora that was then shaped by its own magnetic field, a Z Pinch. And these petroglyphs are showing exactly what was happening. Petroglyphs have mystified the most curious of our kind for millennia found on every continent with striking similarities and widely regarded as the oldest surviving markings on this planet. They could be thousands or even millions of years old, but definitely dating to prehistory. That is, upward of 7,000 years ago in a very reserved scale of the sense of time with campfire remnants found close to petroglyphs in Santa Fe dating to 4,000 years before Christ after carbon-14 dating. Thousands and perhaps tens of thousands of years ago, there was electrical activity in the sky as plasma discharge sequences moved through discrete phases. The explosion of culture documentation seems to have roots directly relating to this and the misinterpretation of these cultural roots all over the world can now be corrected. They were documenting what they were seeing in the sky Together with the YouTube channel Kronos, we intend to help you understand a past that they would rather you wouldn't believe to be real. Wait till you hear this. In this type of plasma discharge occurring in space and as visible from the viewpoint of the observer here on Earth thousands of years ago, and also recreating in laboratory conditions by the legendary physicist Anthony Peratt, this shows the edges of the upper disc may appear to point forming arms and those of the lower torso of the apparent humanoid known as a torus may appear to point down forming legs. The underlying hourglass style pattern with many subtle variations not only occurs around the world, it is among the most fundamental forms appearing in highest energy electric discharge in the laboratory. Recorded by ancient man, this representation of the prehistoric petroglyphs found all over the world in countries including Italy, in a region known as Volca Monica, one of the largest valleys in eastern Italy. We are again confronted with the squatter man type design, which is also seen 3,600 miles away in the United Arab Emirates, and this is repeated on Hawaii, 8,800 miles away from the UAE and also appears to be immortalized in the undeciphered Rongo Rongo inscriptions of Easter Island, the most remote location on the planet. And this is continually repeated in Venezuela, Spain, New Mexico, Armenia, Arizona, and even in Ghana, but to name just a few other locations. 
that appears to show a worldwide phenomenon taking place in the sky and which appears to have an intense inflow of plasma creating this immense aurora system pinched by its own magnetic field and recorded by the ancients of prehistory as a humanoid figure in the squatting position with arms directed upward. Take for example the Arizona petroglyphs, abstract designs to the would-be observer, but according to Anthony Peratt, these are in fact very accurate representations of what was seen in the ancient sky in prehistory as he has shown by comparing radiograph imagery to squatter man images repeated across the world by the million count and upward and always located in mountain regions where these ancient earthlings must have sought shelter in the view of the unstable plasmic aurora. The conception from Anthony's radiograph matches with shocking accuracy to these worldwide petroglyphic phenomena all recorded the same way and sometimes with the two dots at either side representing the Z pinch gravitational influence of the sequence as recorded in the lab. The effects of which are possibly being generated by solar system planets, soon to be discussed in this series by the Lost History Channel. Now, what if we were to tell you that all these petroglyphs around the world are oriented in the direction of magnetic south? all of them as shown at the arizona site and now realized at all other worldwide locations the artists of all the petroglyphs are in a vantage viewpoint of the magnetic south pole from these locations all across the entire planet what was happening was the center of the plasma column in space was coming in right at the south magnetic pole generating synchrotron radiation which was extraordinarily bright and all the petroglyphs around the world seem to have a blinder of some sort that was shielding the observer from the center of the bright radiation and this allowed the documentation in rock art of these instabilities it seems these people emerged from the caves they were sheltering in during quiet periods to etch this documentation it's all oriented magnetic south, and this is vital for understanding the direction the aura was coming from and what may have been causing the intense phenomena. The stunning fact is that these artistic designs are only found at locations where the observer can have a clear view of the magnetic south direction, but with some kind of blinder protecting the observer from the exposure. Interestingly, they are not found in areas where the south pole is obscured by mountains. They just don't exist unless this vantage is clear and this is a stunning and compelling clue that almost overwhelmingly spells out what was happening the largest petroglyph site in europe at italy's valca monica site in the alpine region also shows that they are in the direction orientation of the magnetic south and they too are putting their rock art in locations that seem to have a limited exposure to the extreme aurora event. The intense synchrotron radiation light, if exposed to it, which would have disastrous effects if exposed for any length of time. And this is again repeated as far away as Australia at the site at Akaru Rock Art Cave depictions. Again, orientated to the South Pole with limited exposure in the protection of the mountains but with a clear sight view of the sky. The Babylonians were apparently the first to develop systematic observation of the planets, and they recorded the celestial motions with considerable skill. But in the laying of the foundation of later astronomy, they also preserved a critical link with the past. Again and again, they asserted a claim that could only appear preposterous to the modern translator, they declared that the distant planets were the gods of former times. What exactly does it mean, the gods of former times? Is it a literal term for these plasmatic aurora events from which the Sumerian and all other civilizations emerged? We are again confronted by the squatter man figure, a literal depiction of events in the heavens in the form of plasmatic aurora and what would later be referred to as the gods of former times by the ancient Sumerians. Sumerian myths say that the rites and standards of kingship descended from the central luminary An, 
founder of the Golden Age, and in Babylonian myth, the Sumerian An appears as Anu, first in the line of gods and kings, and according to the best authorities on Babylonian astronomy. The god Anu was mysteriously linked to the planet Saturn, something we will be taking into consideration when addressing the question of what exactly was causing the intense inflow of plasma, creating an immense aurora above our ancient sky. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.